Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of the Small Business Show. How you doing, Dave? I'm good, man. How are you, Shannon? I'm good. I'm very excited about this show because it's all about outsourcing, uh, which I've used a lot in my small business career. Oh. And uh, we have a great guest today. I can't imagine what if I if you took outsourcing away, especially for like programming and, and server maintenance and stuff, my yeah. business would be businesses would be radically different. It it, it really yeah. it's not always the right answer, but it often is the right answer. Sure. Uh, yeah. And there and there's you know, it's either uh, like I've mentioned before, I've had great success at it, but I've also failed miserably at it. So this will be great. I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing and and like all the show I, the shows, I always learn the most. So it's going to be great. Uh, that's what you think. I, 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 <laughs> there, there's someone that disagrees with you and it might be me. It might be somebody <laughs> out right. there. If you folks have anything to say about this feedback at businessshow.co is uh, is where you can let us know because we'd love to hear from you. But I think it's time, right, man? Let's go. We've said it a couple of times of, of, you know, look at your outsourcer, like, like it's a software developer, somebody you hire, you know? So, so, you know, in the beginning, you wouldn't want to give them the super sensitive stuff or the super difficult stuff, but, but hopefully, you know, in a relatively short period of time, just like you would with an employee, you're going to, you're going to grow to trust that individual. And, and, um, and yeah, so I think, you know, I don't, I don't think there are any limits. I mean, you gotta be cautious. You gotta be smart about what you do, especially in the beginning. Um, but you know, if the guy's showing up on time, he's working hard and he's getting stuff done and he's, and he's, you know, he's doing his job, then you give him more responsibility. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything. I mean, we certainly have, I certainly have customers that at this point want to pull away even further than I want to let them. We talk about outsourcing a lot here on the Small Business Show. Back in April, in fact, we focused on using outsourcing as a resource for delegating. And in last week's episode, I shared a little bit of frustration about being both impatient and expecting perfection when using outsourcing for a project, specifically my server move recently. Uh, today, we are fortunate to have Kurt Zwire of CNC Computer Solutions on the show to provide some deeper insight into the whole world of outsourcing, Kurt founded CNC back in 2004 to focus on offshore managed software development. And we're so excited to have you here, Kurt, to educate us about running an outsourced small business. Thanks for joining us, Kurt. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking with you guys today. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, this is great. a little, yeah, this is a little different for us because we were going to do an episode on outsourcing anyway, and uh, just Shannon and I, and then it was like, wait a minute, we should bring Kurt into this conversation. Uh, I, I'll say at the outset, I I, uh, I certainly have not yet used uh, your company, Kurt. I don't think Shannon has. It would be ironic. I have not. No, nope. you had nope. right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It would be very coincidental. So yeah. we haven't we haven't worked together, but obviously we've all uh, had some uh, some outsourcing experience. And of course, Kurt, you are uh, the one actually making it happen. So let's let's start at the start. What prompted you to to create CNC sixteen years ago? Yeah. So, you know, I guess I got involved because, you know, it was, it was a crazy time. You know, the internet was just going, going nuts and, you know, Amazon and eBay were, were making money hand over fist and the world was connected via the internet for a lot of, a lot of different products. And unfortunately at the time, it really didn't seem like anybody, but some of the really large companies could, could take advantage of the global market you know, the employment market. Um, and, uh, you know, so there was a big opportunity there and I was, I was excited to, to get started on that. And, and I, you know, happened to actually have some, some contacts offshore as well. So things kind of, you know, fell together for me. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you, but you are a, you're a software developer by, by training and also by in practice, right? I mean, that is something that you've done with before the offshore thing. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, at the time I had, I had been a software developer for many years already and, and had been, uh, you know, moved into a management role and was, um, was at the time responsible for a relatively large team. 
And so we were, before I started the company, we were looking at my previous employment place. I was looking for uh, ways to expand the team and, and save money. Um, so, you know, I got into it from that perspective as well. Got it. Got it. That Okay. That makes sense. Go ahead, Shannon. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what, so what was the impetus? I mean, w- were you, cause I looking at your LinkedIn profile, looks like you've done, uh, you have a great talent stack and a, and a, a diverse revenue stack. You have things going on different, you know, things with different companies. W- what was the, the impetus that said, that said in your head, Hey, I could, I could start this thing and, and go out and build a company. Cause that's a big step. And we talk about it a lot on the show. It, there's a lot of people that, Hey, I, I'd love to do it, but there's less that actually do it. You know, I think it's, it, it was a couple different things that happened at the same time. You know, I think the, um, things were, things were slowing down and I wasn't getting as challenged as I could have been at the, at the company I was working for. Um, and, and like I said, I had some contacts already in the offshore area. So, um, you know, I, I, I got involved with some, some people I, I met in, in Egypt, as a matter of fact, and, uh, and, and it quickly became aware that at that time they were in a really great place. They were, they were, the, the government had invested in education, had realized that that was the way to help them succeed, uh, you know, better in the international market. However, the companies really hadn't jumped into Egypt yet. You know, India was very large in the outsourcing at that time, but, but a lot of the other, you know, you didn't hear about Polaris and some of the other places in, in Eastern Europe, and you didn't hear about anything in the Middle East and, and it's spread everywhere now, but, but back in that time, I happened to get involved kind of as a, you know, strange occurrence with some people in Egypt and found that, it's a great place to be. Um, so, you know, I had a couple of things that, that kind of made the decision feel comfortable for me. And um, so I took the plunge. That's cool. That's, That's great. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So this is one of those scenarios, Shannon, where uh, Kurt on the show, I point out all the time, the things that I've, I do for myself and, and am not smart enough to realize, Hey, I could turn this into a business. Thankfully you're smarter than me. I, I <laughs> I've outsourced stuff plenty of times. I never thought, Hey, I could, I could create a business uh, facilitating this for other people that don't have the same skills as me, but thankfully right. someone like you is here. So that's really good. <laughs> Well, I appreciate the comment. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, scale of projects, like what, what, if people are looking for this, it, it, what's the right thing to go to for, for CNC? Like what, what kind of scale are the types of projects that you work on the sizes? Oh uh, yeah. So we're all over the map. You know, I, I think there's, it's generally, it's a company gets to a point and pretty much every company gets there. Uh, who has a software product where we have more ideas than we have people who can implement them. And, and of course, cost is always an issue, right? So you have to, you, you, you're always going to have more ideas than you have dollars to throw at those ideas. But, uh, you know, I think, I think people get to a point where they're, where they can identify, these are things we really, really need to have. We need to find some way to make it happen. And, and a lot of times outsourcing is, is the best way to get that done. Sure. You know, it, it can be, you know, cost effective. It can be, it can be, ha- it can happen very quickly. You don't have to go looking for, you know, if you want a team of three or four, it doesn't have to be a team of 10 or 20, but even a team of two, uh, how long does it take to, fi- to find the right two developers out there to do what you want to do? It could take you a while to, to find those people. Um, and so, you know, getting somebody on board in a week or two, would be a great thing. Um, and then of course, you know, we have the cost, the cost savings as well, which is, a, which is a big deal. It helps you get done more with less. So I, I would say that, you know, I, I generally, I wouldn't recommend that you make your decision to outsource or not based on the size or the amount of work that needs to be done. You know, I, I think it's, there's, there's a lot of different, different things that fit different companies. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. That's a, that's a good, way to say that because for me the stuff that i can outsource at least at the get-go if you're starting with outsourcing needs to be in my opinion needs to be something that can be somewhat compartmentalized where you can say okay go and do this thing for me now over time 
you may find that your outsourcing partner gets, you know, more and more ingrained in your business. And, and that can be a great thing because then you can have sort of this ongoing thing. But uh, but yeah, I, you know, compartmentalizing for that, especially for that first project, uh, to me, at least seems to make a lot of sense. Is that kind of what you yeah. see too? Yeah. I, I totally agree. And, you know, it, it's um, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I would say, you know, treat your outsourcer like you would treat an employee. Yeah. You know, you hire somebody new you wouldn't throw, you know, some big, huge, crazy thing at them on day one, right? You're going to get to know them a little bit, let them learn your business. And it's the same type of thing. And, and, and I think the relationships that work really well are those where the company treats the outsourcing company as, as an employee, you know, treat them like one of your own, treat them as a number, a member of the team and, and expect them, the outsourcing company to treat you like an employer. Right. To show up on time every day for work. You know, that's what, that's what you expect your developers to do. This is a new developer, even maybe, you know, maybe a couple of developers, but expect them to show up on time every day, expect them to report in, expect them to do those things that you expect from a, you know, from a, from a regular developer. Yeah. No, that makes that's sense. That's really good advice. That's yeah. really good like, advice. Yeah. Like don't that. just, and, and yeah. And don't just let them sort of run free on the project you you like you would with a developer check in regularly and make sure things are moving along don't just wait for the finished product to show up uh yeah totally yeah, yeah totally yeah yeah i mean and i would go further than that i would say that you know you can't you, we all one of the one of the pieces of advice i would give to anybody is you know you, you the communication that you have with your you know outsourcing companies got to be it's got to be tight and, and it's not all you, you know, it should be, it should be a two way street. You know, we, when we work with, with customers, um, well, you know, we, we take advantage of the agile approach, which we can talk, you know, have different conversations about, but, but, you know, that methodology, I'm totally bought into it. And, and, and the, the, the standards that they lay down and the level of communication that they have built into that whole, uh, methodology is, is awesome, you know? And so, you know, and you should be talking to those people. You can't throw something, you can't do the, I'm going to throw it over the fence method, see what happens in three months. That, that never works. It doesn't work with your own employees. It doesn't work with outsourcing. It doesn't work with anybody. Uh, so yeah, you get, I, I agree completely. You gotta, you gotta stay involved. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, that's good advice. But, but you, um, you provide some level of that there, right? Where you, you are, you're providing the interface sort of between at times between the, the client and, and the programmers. Right. I mean, I, I, I think you probably get out of the way sometimes too, because it, if that's the right path, but uh, is, is yeah, that totally. is right? So, yeah. yeah we, we kind of, we made up a, a name uh, we call them the software solution specialist uh, and, and every customer gets assigned one of those guys and that guy's job is, is, is to be that liaison. Um, so yeah. So, so basically what he has to do is he has to make sure that on a regular basis, multiple times a week or once every two weeks at the least that he's talking to the customer and saying, Hey, you know, here's what we're working on and here's what we've done. And are we still on the same track? Let me show you what we did in the last two weeks. Um, you know, again, kind of following the agile, agile methodology where we, we go in one or two week sprints, work for two weeks at a time, and then, and then show the customer, here's what we did. Is this what you asked for? Or are you sure we're on the right track? Let's make sure that we're building something that your customers are going to pay money for. Because yep. in the end, if you guys can't sell this, you're going to run out of money and we're both going to lose, right? So, you know, we're, our success is tied together. So, um, so yeah, the software solution specialist guy is, that's his, he's, he's there for you anytime, anywhere. Um, you have a cell phone number, <laughs> that's great. so yeah. give him a call anytime you want. And, and, um, but, but again, I think it's, it's one of those things where it shouldn't be on the, you shouldn't as a, as a company who's outsourcing, you shouldn't feel like you have to be the one to do all of the work. You shouldn't have to say, Hey, well, how's it going? How's it going? And, and did you get this done? Did you get that done? And, and, and reminding them about deadlines and stuff like that. There should be a, there should be a give and take, you know, just like, again, the, using the, the thing I said before about that, that good software developer, the guy that you really like, you don't have to bug him to say, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? You know, he tells you when he runs into a problem, 
He tells you when he got something done and he needs the next task. He doesn't go away for weeks at a time. Um, yeah. So that you know, that's the kind of relationship that you should look for if you're going to outsource, and and it's certainly the type of relationship that that uh, that we provide and foster uh, with my company. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Hey, I want to take a minute here and talk about our two sponsors for today. Our first sponsor for today is Go.co because one of the most pivotal decisions you make when launching your business is your name and your URL. But if you're checking availability for your name after naming your business, well, chances are that domain name is already taken. Not to worry. We know how you can get the name you really want because we did it for ourselves. You can choose a domain name that ends in .co at go.co slash SBS. It's short, right? .co. It's only two characters. Makes it easy to remember. We prove that every week. It's global. .co has more than 2 million domains registered across the world. There's more availability, which means that there's a better chance of getting the exact domain name that you want compared to .com. We are your test case here because we did it and it worked. Plus, Go.co offers startup goodies. You can check out their website for access to like freebies and perks and resources, all stuff geared towards startups and new businesses. Get online with your .co domain today, just like us, while it's still available. And we've even got a special deal for you because you're a small business show listener. You can register your .co domain for just five bucks, plus get three months of their website builder and hosting services for free. For the special offer, go to go.co slash SBS today. Don't wait. That's go.co slash SBS our second sponsor for today is Linode because you're going to need a server for something with your business. And I'm going to cut right to the chase. You get a $20 credit at Linode when you go to linode.com slash SBS and use promo code SBS2019. Linode's lowest priced server, their Nanode, only costs five bucks a month which means you could get four months of a nanode for free just because you're listening right now. So check it out. Go to linode.com slash SPS. Use promo code SPS2019. That way you can get yourself a Linode server with native SSD storage. They're super fast. All connected to their 40 gigabit network, industry-leading processors. They've got 10 worldwide data centers with more opening this year. And you can pay by the month or you can just pay for what you use with hourly billing across all their plans and add-on services. If you like using the command line because you're a SSH style person, no problem. They'll do that for you. If you don't ever want to see a command line, but you still need a server up, no problem. Linode's cloud manager has this awesome thing where you just go in and you say, oh, I want a WordPress site. Click, boom. At, they ask you a couple of questions and boom, it's set up. You don't have to know what happened or how. They give you your passwords, your URL, your logins. You're good to go. And that's not just for WordPress. You can do it for all kinds of different things. They've got you covered. Just go check it out. It's free to start because you've got that credit. Linode.com slash SBS, $20 credit when you use promo code SBS2019. Our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. What, what what's your next question on this one? Yeah, so Kurt, I, I've done uh, quite a bit of outsourcing over time. Not sure, you know, some have been successful, some haven't. A lot of what you're talking about, communication and that that follow through, really hits home with me. One of the things that uh, a question I wanted to ask you, um, it was about the kind of the business processes, how how the business functions and works. And and what I mean by that is it is important for the programmers to understand those processes of the, of the company they're working for, or is their technical skill uh, the, the most critical part, you know, to make things successful? How, how do you handle that? Yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. And I think, you know, in, in a lot of cases, every individual developer doesn't need to know everything that's going on business wise. Um, okay, sure. But, but it's certainly somebody needs to. Right. Somebody needs to be paying attention to that, because in the end, like like I just said a few minutes ago, you know, our success and our company's success are, are tied together. Right. Customers and, and the, you know, we're tied together. So somebody needs to be somebody needs to be making sure that that everybody's happy. And, and so that's our, you know, our software solution specialist guy does that. And, 
you know, he, he's going to be the person who's responsible for making sure he understands how your business works and that they were doing the right things. And he, and he questions things, you know, I think one of the That's things great. that I, that I see a lot really, you know, a huge appreciation from the customers is, is when, when someone, you know, one software solution specialist calls him and says, Hey, you know what? You told us to do, you know, feature a this way, but we got, you know, we're doing it. We're doing the same thing or we see it on the web all the time. And most people aren't doing it that way today. We're, they're kind of doing it this way. And so what do you think, you know, so showing that, that we're thinking about this a little bit, we're just not blindly following what we're asked to do and that we do understand what you're ultimately going to do with the software um, and how it fits into your business is, is really important. Yeah. And so we definitely don't want to lose that. Um, so, so to answer your question, I don't think that every developer needs to know it. Certainly the good ones start to learn it anyway, you know, you, you get involved and, and they start to figure it out and, and, um, and they're in tune with it, but, but our software solution specialist guy, that's, that's, that's one of his main roles there is to make sure that, that we're on the same page there. That's great. Yeah. I, I've just had that before where, you know, I may think I know what I'm, what I want. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, my head, but as you get down the line, you want someone that's smarter than you are in, in that particular, you know, area to tell you, Hey, this, this is not the, the best way to do it. We, we would suggest doing it this way. And sometimes I, I've had that happen in the past where that doesn't happen until you're done. And then you go, Oh, wow, we, we, maybe we shouldn't have gone down that road. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, you, you t sometimes you get tunnel vision too, you know, you're focused on the same thing every day and it's nice to have a different brain just to look at it. You know, it, it may not be that, that they know it necessarily any better than you. They just look, you know, came out from a different angle or something. And there's, there's always value in having another brain that's, uh, you know, thinking about the end game. Well, yeah, that sure. is true in both directions, right? I mean, it's absolutely true to have, you know, try and explain what you want to your programmer and have them explain it back to you and, and maybe offer, like you said, some a different perspective on it. The same is true when someone's stuck in a, you know, if your programmer gets stuck in a, a, a you know, a rut on something like I can't make this happen. Let me tell you what's going on and, and ask my advice to folks is ask them, tell, tell me what's going on. What's the pro what are the problems that you're running into? And sometimes just by nature of talking it out, that, that problem can get solved very, very quickly in a way that it might not otherwise. So. Yeah. It sounds like you're a software developer. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you are. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah. So I agree completely. I am, like you said, from the beginning, I, I am a software developer by trade and, and there's no question there's, I can't tell countless times run into a problem, just the act of talking it through with someone else. You go, oh, that's what I, I got it. now. I got it. Now. You yeah. Even, your, your audience doesn't necessarily need to understand every nuance of what you're explaining to them, but, but yeah. the, the effort of trying to break it down and explain it to someone that wasn't there while you were writing the code can be hugely valuable in those scenarios. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and I would say you being a software developer before you did this and during is a huge, uh, uh, competitive advantage or, you know, strategic advantage, because so many of the folks that I've dealt with in the past, they're in the outsourcing business, right? They're, they're, so they're coming at it. So it may take you uh, longer, if at all, to, to hit that point where, you know, you're having that, that uh, dialogue. So yep. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's all our software solution specialists, those guys, that class of people that we have, all of them are developers by trade, don't do any software development, actual coding anymore. They do like architecture and stuff like that. And they're, you know, good English speakers like me. Um, I am a software solution specialist. That's my role at the company uh, today. So I do it. Um, and so it's talking to the customers and then taking that customer goal, vision, or even spec level information and delivering it to the, to the development team to make sure that, you know, and talking through with them, making sure that they, they fully get it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that what a what a great idea to offer because it can be, you know, we're always when we whenever we talk about outsourcing on the show here, we're always trying to sh show people that it's not a scary thing to do, but there are unknowns and there are many many small business owners out there that would very much benefit from using some offshore development teams and and effort, but no way that they would be comfortable 
actually engaging directly with those teams and and making that happen. And so I think it's brilliant what you're doing. I think it's great. Yeah, it's tough. It's, yeah I, I, I get it. It's, it's really tough to, um, to take that leap sometimes, you know? Um, and, and, and again, I think it comes back to if you can find an outsourcing company that you can treat like an employee and they treat you like, you know, like a good employee would treat their boss. Um, it makes life a lot easier and you feel a lot more comfortable, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, uh, Shannon, you usually ask everybody this question, but I'm going to take it today because <laughs> we good. are huge and I'll probably screw it up, which is sort of <laughs> ironic. Uh, we're huge fans of mistakes here on the Small Business Show because we've made so, so many of them ourselves, but they're so valuable in terms of teaching us things and all of that. So we always like to ask, what would you say is one of your, we used to say favorite mistake, but you know, what's a highlight mistake or, or you know, if you've only ever made one, then that would be your favorite mistake. But uh, yeah. what's, what's, a, what's a mistake that stuck with you and, uh, and taught you a valuable lesson in your business here? Ooh, yeah. So, um, you know, I would say it's probably, you know, the, the one that really stands out is, is the value of customer service. So, you know, it's, you know, back early on. Um, yeah, I, it just, there's so many, every, every advertisement, every commercial you see, the cliches just fall out of, you know, we're the best, the best customer service. We do this, we do that. It, the customer service is in every advertisement that you see. And, and it, and it's, you, I guess you just kind of get dull to it, you know? And, and so it wasn't one of those things that I thought to emphasize when speaking to customers early on and when speaking to my employees early on that customer service is that important. And, um, you know, and then you walk into a big home improvement store and you buy a ceiling fan and it's got missing parts when you get it home and you bring it back and they say, okay, no problem. Just go get another one off the shelf and you're good. And, and you realize that, you know, making the customer happy easily, not, not, it's not a fight. They didn't ask you, all right, did you drop it on your way to the car? Did you break us something while you're unpacked? They don't, they just say, go get another one. Right. It's just so easy. And, and I, and you know, I, I, I learned that early on that, you know, when a customer says, oh, this isn't what I said, it doesn't make sense to say, well, no, you did. And let me go find the email and what, okay, we'll fix it. You know, just we'll, we'll make it right. I'd say that's probably the biggest thing. And, and it's not just for software development. It's, it's, you know, it's small business. It's for everything. Right. We, yeah. it, we always say, it's huge. Yeah. and we always say on the show here, every business is the customer service business. So it, it's, I, I know both Shannon and I are smiling sitting here. As yes. You, as you I chose. can play this at, at, for every uh, episode to what you just yeah. said, because that is exactly, you know, uh, digging up things and trying to show them that they did this or that, it, it's just a losing. You've already lost <laughs> at that yeah. point. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had a, I had an issue this week where it was obvious we needed to fire this customer. And so I started, I started the email. It was, it was a scenario where I could have gone down the path of, of, of yes, you're right. Let's fix it for you. But I, I did not ever want to have to fix this for this customer ever again. It was obvious that it was just a bad fit. And so it was, yeah. Hey, to start with, we're finished. I'm not going to try and twist your arm to, to make you do the things that we thought you said you would do. doesn't matter. We're, 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 we're good. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You know, but, uh, but unless you're in, unless that is the decision you have made, and I would caution most business owners not to make that decision lightly, uh, unless that's the decision you made, then, then it is the customer's right and just make it happen for them so that you can keep them and happy and everybody's good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big one. It is cool. cool. It, it is the big I, one. I, I, yeah. yeah. And, and I have one quick, uh, one more question to kind of, you know, specifically uh, about outsourcing and, you know, your business. What is there something that, you know, certain tasks that you would not recommend, you know, a, a, a company, you know, go out and hire an outsourcing things that based on your experience should really be handled in house or as, as things have developed over time, you know, is there really no limits to it? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't see real limits. It's very particularly with, you know, software development outsourcing sure. because, because 
you know, again, I, I have that philosophy in my head. You know, we've said it a couple of times of, of, you know, look at your outsourcer, like, like it's a software developer, somebody you hired, you know? So, so, you know, in the beginning, you wouldn't want to give them the super sensitive stuff or the super difficult stuff, but, but hopefully, you know, in a relatively short period of time, just like you would with an employee, you're going to, you're going to grow to trust that individual. And, and, um, and yeah, so I think, you know, I don't, I don't think there are any limits. I mean, you gotta be cautious. You gotta be smart about what you do, especially in the beginning. Um, but you know, if the guy's showing up on time, he's working hard and he's getting stuff done and he's, and he's, you know, he's doing his job, then you give him more responsibility. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything. I mean, we certainly have, I certainly have customers that at this point want to pull away even further than I want to let them, you know, they're like, oh, sure, just go do it. And, <laughs> and, and, and you don't want to be in that situation because you ultimately, uh, you know, from, from where I sit, I don't actually, even as a software solution specialist, I don't get to speak to my customers, customers. So right. I don't have the ability to know for sure is somebody going to pay money for this or not? You know, so, and I want them to be successful, but I can't make that determination in some cases, in a lot of cases. So, so I forced them to stay involved. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a good thing. You know, I think um, most customers want to stay involved, you know, let's, let's be clear, but, um, but the guys who, you know, get to a comfort zone where they're like, all right, I'm ready to do the throw it over the fence and wait three months and see what happens. I, I don't, I don't let us get there. I think that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's that's a, yeah. Uh all right. So our other favorite question to ask is you know, you've been at this for a long time. If you had one piece of advice to give to a small business that's considering outsourcing work, what would that be? And it may be something you've already shared here in the episode or it might be something you haven't shared yet. Um the one piece of advice I would give, um, yeah, I would say, I guess I've, we've talked about it a little bit here and there, but, but stay involved, stay involved. Uh, you know, again, along that, you know, treat them like an employee, uh, uh, theme, uh, you know, expect to talk to them, expect that they're going to talk to you on a regular basis. Um, and, and keep it simple. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard. It really shouldn't be hard. You know, I, there's so many things if you, if you just keep going back to that, treat them like an employee, expect them to behave like an employee. Uh, there's so many things, for example, um, the contract, you know, there, there's contracts that they get signed for outsourcing and, and sometimes they can be so complex and lawyers involved and all this other stuff. And it really shouldn't be that hard. You don't, you don't, you don't have to sign a, a 150 paid contract to hire an individual developer. Right. And you shouldn't have to do that for an outsourcer either. Yeah. Uh, it should be, it should be easy. It should be clear. Um, you shouldn't have to get roped in. Right. So some of those contracts say you need to sign up with us for three months or six months or whatever. But that's not the way it works with an employee. If you're not happy with an employee, you can fire them at any time. Right. Um, that's how it should so, work. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the way the contract should work. It should be simple. It shouldn't be hard. Stay involved with your, stay involved with your company, just like you would with an employee and, and it should be easy. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's all, it's awesome. Really good advice. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Kurt. Is there any, is there anything else before we, before we say thank you and, and go our, our separate ways and let our listeners go our, their separate ways for the day? Is, is there anything else that, uh, that you'd like to share or at the very least, Tell people where we can uh, we can find you after the fact here. Yeah, so I'd uh, I love to hear from any any of the listeners. Um, so yeah, we have a website like everybody else in the world, um, and that's uh, www.c the number three s software dot com. Um, and um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that um, I think you guys did a good job of. Uh, put it all out there and grilling me. It's great. Perfect. Yeah. It's really good stuff. And we're going to be talking about this one for a while. I know. I really yeah. I'm happy to come back on to talk, uh, answer any questions, share any other experiences. I don't have anything right now, but I'm um, awesome. happy to come back. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Really great to have you. We'll, uh, we'll see you again in the future. I'm sure. Yeah. Thank you guys. Man. <laughs> 
gosh. I love talking about this stuff. I don't know about you, Shannon. It seems like you do, yeah. I do, and I love hearing uh, Kurt's take on it and, you know, that key thing. It sounds so simple, but but being connected and you know uh go, you know being in touch with these these guys is critically important oh i it, yeah it, and you know i've proven that to myself time and time again but i don't necessarily know that i ever really crystallized that thought for myself until we were having this conversation with kurt that yeah you got to be in touch i mean he's gotta right you've got to do it with your employees especially if you've got remote or project employees, whether they're contractors or outsourcers or officially employees, it can be really easy to lose sight of that and say, oh, yeah, just let yeah. them work on the project. But no, 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 no. That's- yeah, you have to have to keep in touch. And, and speaking of keeping in touch, we would love to hear from you either uh, if you have a question or a comment, feedback at businessshow.co. And you could really help us out by leaving a review for the show at businessshow.co slash review. We would love to hear from you. I I have one more ask. I know I'm not supposed to have more than two instructions in the show, but when you're talking to other small business owners, either in person or maybe you're part of a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group or something, would you do us a favor and tell them about the small business show at businessshow.co? We would love to... Have you tell your favorite business people, or if you don't like the show, maybe tell your your most hated business people. We don't. We're fine. <laughs> like we're, we we don't. You know we don't judge. It's all good. We would love for you to share the show with with uh, with your friends and colleagues. We think that would be great. So that's awesome, all I man. got today, great man. Show. How about you? Yeah. yeah, me too. No, I love it. I'm gonna go uh, write down some notes because uh, I <laughs> I learned a lot as but, usual. That's how it works. Thanks to our sponsors, go.co slash SBS and lino.com slash SBS. Thanks to all of you for listening. We really appreciate it, folks. Keep living that charmed life. See you next week. <laughs>